Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Anne Cleary. I come from Dundalk Institute of Technology, and I'm here with my colleagues from our partner partners in this project, uh, Dr. Mary Delaney from Carlo IT, Dr. Philip Cohen from the Dublin Institute of Technology, Jamie Ward and Brianna Turner from our own institution. Mary and Jamie are hopefully seamlessly going to contribute to the presentation as well. Um, and for the rest of the time, it's basically me. So first of all, we're really happy to be here, uh, despite the nerves and the anxiety, and we really want to tell you about why this project matters to us. <coughs> So one of the reasons we're working together is because we happen to be institutions who feel very passionate that information, what we call information literacy, makes a real difference in the lives of our students, of our academics, and in our wider society. And we happen to be colleges that have been teaching information literacy for almost 20 years. The kind of work that we do, you can see from the slides here, has different kinds of impacts. Collectively, we engage with students who are in transition year and who might also be working on PhDs. Most of our institutions were lucky enough to be able to reach the kind of percentages of students that you can see here. And we also obviously give a lot of time to information literacy for that to happen. And we also find ourselves quite frustrated by the work that we do. And that happens not just because we don't always have the resources we need or the staff or the facilities and so on, but also actually because we have librarians who care about what they do. We care about the students that we're working with and we need to have a professional develop development framework that works for them, not just once off training, but something that actually can sustain them and us throughout their careers. So this is what our project is about. This is what our project will be about. So we basically want to take the framework that's been suggested, to pilot it in libraries, to interpret it for libraries, because we think there may be slight pieces of it that need to be reinterpreted for our context, to build resources and processes to assist that, to link to everybody else and all the other work that's going on so that we can share learning from it, and really then to figure out and to model how we can embed and sustain the framework in the day-to-day -day work of our librarians, of our lives, and of our institutions. And to come back to this idea of why this matters. So over the last 20 years, teaching has become a huge part of what librarians do. And you can see that from the figures that we've told you about. But as that has evolved, really what hasn't evolved is a development framework that actually supports that process. So as librarians, we don't generally have a professional formation in how to teach. And then we find ourselves teaching. Our institutions tend to see us in this third space, so we're not actually covered by the professional development plans that address academic needs. And we're also not, we're not administrative staff, and we tend to be doing things that don't really fit in, and sometimes in ways that don't really fit in with the framework frameworks that are there. So to give you an example, we may not have all the hours required to fit into the academic CPD frameworks that exist <coughs> at a given time or at a given year. So as such, we really need to find opportunities for our, li our librarians and for ourselves to develop. And as I've said, what we're really looking for is something that actually enables us to develop on an ongoing career-long process. So the framework for us is the first time we've actually seen that in writing. And it's the first opportunity we've seen for that to happen for us. So we think it actually can fill the gaps and, as we say, offer us an adaptable and sustainable solution. So I know we have to come to this process of how, and we thought we'd just start with three very simple words that obviously <coughs> embed and hold a lot more. Engagement sounds really simple. Um, one of the things that's really interesting is that information literacy is the thing that Irish academic librarians write most about. So we know that people in our libraries care about information literacy, and we also think that that concern, if you like, that there's also a concern about how do we do it, are we doing it right, and it's maybe perhaps a lack of confidence about how it works. So we know that for this to work, we have to find ways of engaging with our staff so that they're happy to participate in it. <laughs> we've come up with a model for how we think participation could work. That model is what we've suggested and what we're calling learning sets and communities of practice. And to just elaborate a little bit on those, we see those as places where peers can support learning, where individuals can engage with the framework, figure out where they sit in relation to it, articulate that, and have their roadmap, if you like, acknowledged by others, have the work that they undertake towards their learning acknowledged, and where they find places for ongoing growth and support and challenge so that they can develop. 
those of us who run the libraries and those of us who are supporting people who teach have an ongoing responsibility to obviously care and support our staff. But one of the things we really need is another process that actually helps us so that the people who come to teach, the people who jo join our libraries, the people who get promoted, the people who find themselves in new contexts actually start to say, yes, we can. This is how I can see myself as a teacher rather than as somebody who is a librarian and therefore cannot teach. And therefore this idea of development is really critical for us in terms of how we go forward with the framework. The next slides are really looking at alignments and how we think our work is fitting in with the national project. So we feel that we're going to embody some of the values and the practices that are set out in the framework because we have peer learning and we're going to find ways of engaging with the fine domains and Jamie's going to allude to that in his, his contribution to this and that we will end up with what we are calling individual learning agreements which are basically an individual's roadmap in relation to where they sit with the framework and which they can, if you like, develop and contain and work with throughout <coughs> their lives. Information literacy is always in all of our strategic plans, as is to the need for more professional development around it. We know that there are also other people in this sphere. So one of them, for example, are the professional bodies, which we really see as critical to the ongoing work of our project and how it can be sustained in the future. In terms of outputs, we hope we're going to end up with a model of how to implement and embed the framework, or else a model of what not to do, but whichever way it goes. We hope we're going to end up with champions who've done it and can articulate its benefits, and that those champions, if you like, realise that the framework gives them a place for their ongoing development, not just once-off interventions. And that we will have some kind of tools for implementation, assessment, and of course data and evidence, so that that can again inform our practice and our scholarship and our ongoing work. In terms of the practicalities and how we're going to do it, we will have obviously a steering group which will involve our partners, students, possibly our local Celt and possibly people we hope from the professional bodies. We think that individually people will be working in their peer sets and their learning sets and that they, that will be an arena for them to work with themselves but also for us to gather exp their experience and we're also going to be liaising with the other pilots and with other interested parties. In terms of impacts, the kind of things that we're looking for is actually seeing, does it make a difference to students? Does it make a difference to their experience of us as teachers? We're going to be looking at how the librarians themselves actually self-evaluate and how they can see the impact. We're going to be looking at how this project might help us and the libraries to become more explicit and more obvious as teachers and that that might pr create different kinds of collaboration and synergies in our institutions. And we're really, I suppose, ultimately hoping that we will see librarians who can teach with confidence, with empowerment and with a willingness to keep learning. The kind of things we want to use to assess all of this will include looking at student feedback, evidence from our colleagues, our librarians, any evidence of new initiatives at work, and that we will look to see how the framework is being embedded in the institutions that are piling it. What impact is it making on policies and on the local practices? And obviously we'll expect to have conferences, seminars, papers, and, and other, other things like that. As I say, one of the things we really feel is necessary is a sustainable process and it's very easy sometimes to have these projects to create models, to have the champions and then what happens. And it seems to us that one of the critical things that we think we can do with this project is to actually talk to other people who are in the library sphere and that includes our colleagues in <coughs> PEA, in the other institute libraries, Connell librarians which represents the university libraries to see if they can take some of our learning and embed it into their practices and policies. And secondly, to actually talk to the professional body. So the primary professional body for librarians in Ireland is the Library Association of Ireland. And the Library Association of Ireland has an accreditation process. And we think there is a way for us to take the framework and to get that built in, which again becomes a motivator for people who are in libraries and might want to participate in the project. And obviously acknowledges and accredits the work that people have done. And we also think that institutionally we have to look at how this actually gets embedded into the day-to-day -day work of what we do, into our recruitment practices, into our evaluations, into our PMDS, into our criteria for appointments and promotion. And that's just my perspective, but I want to hand you over to Jamie, who's going to talk about what it means to him, because he is a teacher librarian and why this, why this makes a difference. I am a teacher librarian. <laughs> um, thank you, Anne. Um, I want to just go into some reasons why we feel it really matters and it's this um, 
continuous professional development framework is really uniquely relevant to librarians. Um, a wee bit about myself, I'm 14 years working as an academic uh, librarian, 12 of those years. I have been teaching. Um, I've become very passionate about teaching, but I have to admit you to the, today that for those 12 years, I actually haven't received any formal training in teaching. So that's what you have today before you. Um, I have no ongoing, we get no ongoing support for my evolution as a teacher. So just to set the framework for what we are as teacher librarians, okay? Um, a wee bit um, more detail on um, teacher librarianship. We are, specifically we're called academic librarians. We're multifaceted, we have a lot of functional roles. We offer um, a very complex service, but it would be fair to say that we're not solely or even principally involved with teaching, okay? Um, we're, so typically I might be asked to do one, two, three classes, and I might be doing something on the system 10 minutes before a class, and actually dealing with a query at the desk um, 15 minutes after a class. So uniquely, um, we need CPD, okay? We're a, a profession that's in transition, so traditionally we've always seen ourselves has um, fulfilling students' needs, giving them information things, journal articles, books. But in the era of ubiquitous access to information, we're actually now being asked to involve <laughs> ourselves in the process of information. So we're, we're actually getting down and talking to students, uh, intermediating between the actual information and the students, okay? A lot of that is actually informal. So we actually talk to students, um, at information desks um, informally and information literacy is only one of the aspects that actually addresses this transitional period okay information literacy is interdisciplinary it's agnostic in the sense that it's important for all discipline areas within the college um, so it has benefit if we get this um, project, we should be able to then benefit all the actual disciplines. Um, currently, we found that continuous professional development is really orientated towards the academics and not towards what we call the toward space people who actually deal with queries <coughs> at an informal um, place. Now, just looking at the framework, um, when we looked at the framework, we actually got quite excited. Um, has librarians get excited? Uh, <laughs> what that looks like? <laughs> I am excited. Um, but then we got excited by the actual phrase all staff. Um, that really stood out for us. And we drilled, two minutes, we drilled down, I'm not just going to go into all the domains, but we drilled down into things like the self and teaching. So we're not traditionally you know, self-reflective as librarians but it made us actually look at things like confidence. So because we're not categorized as, as actual teachers, we were going into classes and maybe 30, 45 people and we weren't teachers. So I'm just going to run through these. We had a look at things like prior learning. These are just the <coughs> elements within the domains. Um, but the actual surveys of librarians said that uh, teaching, learning and presenting is actually second only to information technology um, as the greatest subject of interest, okay? So I just want to finish off, I'm going to skip through the actual domains by saying, and hand a note to Mary, by just saying that we are very <coughs> grateful that the framework has come now in a very relevant time because after 12 years, I need something, we need help. <laughs> um, and as a, as a mechanism to confront these challenges we face. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to end with what we consider to be a very important point, which is around our project and the student voice. Obviously, as, libra as library staff and working in libraries, we, we, are, we work so closely with students and we really value everything um, that they tell us. And over the years, we really do try as best we can to take on board everything that they say. And as, as you know, we're broadly involved in teaching. We're involved in graduate attributes, generic skills, student engagement. Um, so we always value and would continue to value in this project the student voice. Um, 
and I know Anne spoke about that in her presentation earlier on, the students' perspective we consider to be critical to the success of this project. Um, we would certainly have a very student-centred approach to our teaching across all our institutes. We would consider the students have key roles to play in terms of us establishing how we would integrate the domain. We would include students in our steering groups, focus groups, and indeed in certain methodologies that we might use. Um, and we would continue to seek their feedback so we could continue to explore how we could inform and enhance our teaching. That's it. And we do, I suppose we can end on this slide, we seek to partner with students on their academic journey. We've, we've always done that. But we really must focus on building where they've come from and where they're going. And as Anne said, just in her opening slide, we have students come to us often from second level schools, straight through to visit us informally to more formally, and it's to consider them in, their wider, in the wider breadth of all that we do with them. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you.